So for autonomous differential equations, much like discrete time dynamical systems, we can kind of get a lot of information about what these dynamical systems do just by kind of looking for their equilibrium points and kind of classifying the stability of those equilibriums, kind of analyzing the behavior of our system around equilibrium points, right? So an equilibrium point for a disc, uh, for an autonomous differential equation is a place, right? So if you have a autonomous differential equation, dx dt is some function of x, an equilibrium x star is a point where there is no change in x, right? So we're looking for a place where dx dt, which is f of x star, is zero, right? Because that means that the rate of change is zero and there's no change, right? In x, right? So we're stuck at this equilibrium point, okay? So let's think about kind of that example that we ended with, right? We had this diffusion of chemicals across the cell membrane, right? We had this diffusion across a cell membrane, right? Where we had this cell with concentration C, permeability beta, and then outside concentration outside the cell was this gamma equals outside with the ambient concentration of this particular ion right and we wrote down our differential equation right our autonomous de was the change in the concentration of the ion inside the cell was beta times gamma minus C, okay? So this uh, differential equation has an equilibrium when, and we can call this, you know, our little F of C, right? There's no time here. It's an autonomous differential equation with state variable C. So the equilibrium C star is when F of C star is equal to zero. Right. So we could solve this equation, right? That says beta times gamma minus C star is equal to zero, All right? So that gives us that C star is equal to gamma, All right? So when the equilibrium concentration, sorry, when the concentration of your ion inside the cell is the same as the concentration outside the cell, then the cell is at equilibrium, All right? So here, when uh, cell, concentration is equal to outside concentration, then the cell is at equilibrium, right? In kind of a true physical sense, the flux in is matching the flux out. There's no change in our cellular concentration of this particular ion, okay? So another way to kind of uh, solve these equations, right? We're looking for where this right-hand side function f of c is equal to zero. So another way to find this is graphically. Another way to find equilibrium is graphically, okay? Using what's called the phase line diagram, right? So this you know, for, for a linear equation like this, it's not that hard to just solve the equation, but sometimes these, uh, these functions can be more complicated and we'll need to use, you know, maybe a graphical method to find those places where we cross the zero. Um, or we can use the rest of the information in this graph to kind of give us a little bit more understanding of what's going on in the system. Okay, so here we're gonna plot um, dc dt versus C, right? Not versus time, okay? And so we're going to plot this function, beta, uh, gamma minus C. I'm gonna just pretend that beta and gamma are both positive numbers, right? So I'm just gonna say beta, gamma are both positive. This is just a sketch, so it's not like I'm gonna have actual values here. All right, I want to plot this 
f of c, which is beta gamma minus c. All right, so it's minus c, and it's going to have an intercept of beta gamma, right? This point here is beta gamma, and it's a straight line, right? Through that point, and it's going to intersect my axis at gamma, right? Because that's where f of c is equal to zero. Okay, so this is beta gamma, and this is gamma, right? And so we could say, okay, based on this graph, there's an equilibrium point here. Equilibrium. Equilibrium. Where C equals gamma, right? Where F of C equals zero, which says that C is gamma, okay? So that's sort of the same information, but the extra information we get from our phase line diagram is we know now what dc dt looks like to the left and right of the equilibrium, right? To the left, right, let's say in red here, right? dc dt is positive, right? dc dt, which is this f of c, is positive for c less than this equilibrium point, okay? So if dc dt is positive for c less than gamma, what happens in this situation, right? We said that the concentration is increasing, right? That's what dc dt positive means, right? So c increases. But it doesn't just keep increasing forever, right? Eventually, it's going to get to this equilibrium concentration level up to gamma, right? Once it hits gamma, the concentration change is zero, so it stays there, okay? So this is sort of getting at the idea of stability that we saw in discrete time systems, right? If I start my system away from this equilibrium point, well, it's going to go towards it, at least from the right, from what I've shown here. Let's check on the left, right? On the left here, well, dc dt is actually negative if I look at this function, right? Which is f of c, it is negative over here on the, sorry, on the right. So what does that mean? Well, if dc dt is negative for c bigger than gamma, then that means that c is going to decrease, right? Because my concentration, change concentration over time is negative. My concentration is bigger than gamma. So my concentration is gonna decrease up to c equals gamma, right? So I started bigger than gamma, I'm gonna decrease until I reach gamma, at which point I'm at equilibrium, right? My rate of change is zero, All right? This is dc dt equals zero. So from both sides, right? For c less than gamma, I increase up to gamma. For c greater than gamma, I decrease down to gamma. So no matter where I start, I'm always gonna reach this equilibrium point, right? So we would say that C star equals gamma is a stable equilibrium because of this baseline diagram's information, right? Because, you know, trajectories that start near, right? Start near the equilibrium. move towards it, right? So this is exactly the same definition of stability that we had before, but it's kind of a different situation, right? Now we're thinking about, you know, the, the sign of this thing, as opposed to before when we were thinking about, well, which way was it in that cobweb diagram? But it's still a very similar idea, right? Trajectories are moving towards this equilibrium point. So a stable equilibrium point will often be kind of the eventual state of a system right, where it'll end up, if I just kind of let this system evolve to a natural state, it should go towards a stable equilibrium point, okay? Another way to think about this is, in order for it to be stable, we had to be positive on the left, negative on the right, right, because then we changed, we increased from the right, sorry, from the left, or decrease from the right, right? So another way of thinking about that is, my derivative at this particular point 
is negative, right? So another uh, way to think about this is the stability criterion, which says that um, at an equilibrium point, right, where f of, let's say, x star equals zero, right, that, that decides an equilibrium point for a system dx dt equals f of x, right, so at an equilibrium point, if f prime at this equilibrium point is negative, right, then that means we're in a situation like this, where we cross the axis from uh, the left, right, with negative slope, right, which means we're positive on the left, negative on the right, which means if you start to the left or right, you're going to go towards this equilibrium point. Okay, so if f prime at this equilibrium point is negative, then x star is stable. It's a stable equilibrium. And then the opposite kind of interpretation of this would be if f prime of x star is positive, then x star would be unstable. Okay. So let's give another example of when this situation might happen. If f prime is actually zero, then this test is inconclusive. It doesn't tell you uh, whether your equilibrium point is stable or unstable. Okay. So um, hold on one second. Sorry about that. Okay, so, um, right, so let's do an example of when this might happen. Let's go back to that population growth example. I think I might have said it doubles every hour. I don't think that's exactly right. Um, it's just doubling kind of constantly. So it's different than doubling every hour. All right, so we have this population growth dx dt was 2 times x, right? We had this autonomous differential equation for some population that is kind of doubling all the time, okay? So what are some equilibrium of this? Well, we look for where, right, this is f of x. Look for where f of x is equal to 0. So that says 2x is equal to 0. So the only equilibrium point is x star equals 0. Okay, if we look at the phase line, right, if we look at this phase line diagram for this problem, then if we draw it out. Our function to plot, right, so dx dt versus x, we want to plot the function f of x equals 2x, right? which looks like this. Oops. Let me um, let me draw a line just like that. Crossing through zero, right? So this is f of x equals 2x. This is kind of the rule for my autonomous differential equation. All right, so we can see at zero, it has an equilibrium point. at x equals zero, because that's where f of x is equal to zero, right? That's where this rate of change dx dt is zero, right? Which kind of makes sense for this problem. The only population that doesn't change, according to this rule, it's a population of nothing, right? No individuals can reproduce. So that's the only time that this system will be in equilibrium. Otherwise, it's gonna double and double and double and double for all time, okay? So what does that mean for the stability of the system? Well, if we look on the left here, um, in red, right, for x less than zero, dx dt is negative, right? So what that means is if x is less than zero, then dx dt is less than zero, right? Which means x will decrease. Okay, but because there's no equilibrium point on the left, it's just gonna decrease forever. 
okay? It's not going to get stuck in the equilibrium point because there is no equilibrium point. It's just going to decrease forever. The same, same kind of idea will happen on the right here. Right? If I look over here, if x is positive, then dx dt, right? if I look at my function, it's also positive, which means x will increase. Will it increase up to an equilibrium point? Well, there is no equilibrium point on the right, so it will just increase forever. Okay, so then if you think about it, this equilibrium, if we're not at the equilibrium point, right, if I start to the right, right, if I start over here, then I'm going to move away, right? I'm just going to increase away from this equilibrium point. If I start on the left, I'm going to move away as well, all right? I'm going to decrease away from this point, right? So trajectories that start near this equilibrium point, the equilibrium, are actually going to move away from it, from it. Okay, and that's the, uh, the traditional definition of unstable, right? So x star is unstable, okay? And if we look at the stability criterion, right, for this problem, we wanna look at f prime of x star, well, our function was f of x equals 2x. So f prime, right, f was 2x, so f prime of x is just 2. So f prime at our equilibrium point is also 2, which is positive, right? Which is means that x star is unstable, okay? So if you're ever crossing in your phase line diagram with positive slope, then you're always gonna get this situation where on the right, you're increasing away, on the left, you're decreasing away. Versus when you cross the phase line diagram, when you cross that x axis with negative slope, then on the right, you're moving towards it, right? Because that derivative is positive. And on the left, you're moving, sorry, on the right, you're moving towards it, and on the left, you're moving towards it. Because here, the derivative is positive, so you're increasing up to it. Over here, your derivative is negative, so you're decreasing down towards it, okay? So that's kind of the idea uh, of this phase line diagram and stability criterion giving you exactly the same information, okay? And for these simple systems, it's kind of overkill, uh, but for more complicated systems, uh, like I'll do in another video, this will be a very useful tool.